we are building a controller ground up and we have currently populated almost all the functions on the live fly here with functions on the atom switcher. But there are still many more functions in the atom switcher we want to access and some of them would be macros and also audio channels. We can use uh, shift levels to access alternative functionality. We saw how when I hold down the shift key that we can access sources that is, is not um, possible to fit into the default layout. We could also do it for something like the Kia. So we had on off toggle or auto. But what I'm suggesting now is that we get deeper down. We, for instance, what I want is to have six keys up here that will instantly give me access to uh, starting and stopping macros. So how can we do that? Well, we have a great concept in the controllers called states. And think about states like pages uh, in, 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 in other contexts. So it's like, imagine you have a tab and what you see on that tab is, is, is this view and then you change the tab and then you, you see something else. So we could kind of have tabs or pages or whatever you want to call it for these buttons, okay? I think you'll understand when you see what I'm doing right now. So I'm simply going into the interface and I'm now changing the number of states we have to two. And I'm saying I want to have in the normal state and now I want to have the macro state. I'm saving this. So the moment I do this, you'll see that in the interface I have two columns for configuration and the second column will be where I put actions when I'm st in, in the state called macro on the macro page, all right? So now I will select the six keys I have up here. So we can now see the configuration for those shift, uh, six keys in the interface right there, all right? So basically what I wanna do is to say when I'm in the macro state on the macro page, I'm gonna execute a macro. So let's just find the macro execution action, play macro, and then play macro number one, play, okay, um, that's fine. And I'm now in the usual style, copy pasting this onto other elements, right like this. Good, okay. So the only thing is that how do I change the state? I suggest that we, we pick one of the keys over here, U1, for instance, to be a little menu selector. So um, it doesn't make much sense to save it yet. I'm just picking U1. And then uh, in this state, I will, um, on this key, I will assign an action called state. So remember back to the previous video about shift levels where I picked uh, a, uh, I could change the shift level by a similar command. So in this case, I'm now changing the state. I'm going to state number one. So state zero is the normal state. State number one is the one I just um, created called macros. And um, I want it to be hold down. No, wait, I want it to be toggled. That kind of makes more sense, doesn't it? Um, well, it could be either. No, just hold down. So as long as I hold down this key, it's going to change to the other state and I'll see something else up here. So let's see if that works. I'm saving. Okay, so you can see state register, what does it say? Yeah, state macro. I hold it down, I see a change here. So macro number one, if we wanna see if it's actually playing back macros, let's go here and see macros. Uh, we should be able to see in run that I hold this one down, I press the first one. You can see it's now actually running the first macro on the switcher. I don't know how long this is. It's probably hopefully stopping right there. It is. I could run macro number two. So now it's number two, it's running. So basically I'm accessing this by holding down this key. I'm now on that different page and releasing it again. Let me just reiterate. Um, what we just did, adding this state, basically means that for those six keys, when I hold down macro, it is everything in the second column that is now on those keys. And when I release it, I'm falling back to the first column called normal. Okay, so far so good. Now let's, let's take it one step further and let's add a third state. We call that audio, save. And now I have a third column and I can put actions into that. And I can also, uh, so how do I access that column, by the way? Um, I do that by, for instance, changing this one so it would be cycling. Let's say that it's cycling up 
And if I'm setting it to state number two, what that means is that when this, when I press this button, for each time I'm pressing, it is going through the normal state, then the, the macro state, then the audio state. And uh, let's just save and see if that's what's happening. Okay, so this one, I don't know if you can read it, but it says normal, I press, we are now in macro, I press, we are now in audio, I press, I'm back to normal again. So, we only see something happening for macro. Why is that? Well, because when I'm in audio, we have not defined any actions yet. And the default behavior for uh, states is just like with shift levels. If there's nothing defined for shift level, it will fall back to the normal action. If there's nothing defined for state, it's going to fall back to the normal state. So you need to keep that in mind, but that's generally a very useful case because when what we are really doing right now is focusing on how these six buttons can react to states. And we want in the audio state to apply actions for audio adjustment. Right, we are now selecting these again, like that, for the, oh, by the way, um, the interface can become quite messy when you have nine states on a controller. That's actually the standard case on stuff like an Airfly, which is one of our uh, fairly simple controllers. Or um, Well, it's, it's doing a lot of cool stuff, but... Um, <coughs> When you have nine columns, it's going to be really difficult to handle. This is why you can actually disable a state by this. So I now disabled macro and I only see audio and I see the normal state. You always see the normal state because you want to know what you are falling back to. But this makes it easy for me to add some kind of audio control here. And uh, I select audio for input source number one. I can do um, probably on. I guess this is going to toggle on off. That's what I want. Yes. Okay. Insert for channel number two, three, four, and five, and six. All right. Save. And I'm already in the audio state, so that's what you see pop up right there. Now, as I do this, you can see that I'm apparently toggling something. I go to the audio tab, and in the audio tab, you see that as I am pushing these buttons, I am toggling on and off audio sources in the ATEM switcher. Voila! So, um, one thing that's beginning to annoy me a little bit is the fact that I use the same color scheme for macros and for audio. That's not working well for me. So, I want to overwrite that. Guess what we do? Just like, um, just like we previously did for the color in, in section, uh, section 2 in the configuration, so for this section, uh, we set a local color right there. Let's just copy this action over to the macro state. And now I can, that's really super cool, change it to amber and I want to have a regular office dimmed scenario just like that. And for the audio state, I could likewise uh, change a color to, what is it I usually want to do? I think cyan. The cyan color is great. That works out for me. So, save. And there you go. Now, different color scheme for audio and different color scheme for macros, which is now a nice amber color. Okay, so I think that was um, a nice introduction to states on its most basic level. So you have now seen shift and you have seen state on a lifelike controller like this.